Good evening, guys. Just a small technical issue. Just wait for a minute. We'll get started. So are you hear me? Yes or no? Guys, can someone respond? Am I already? Yes, sir. Okay. Is the screen visible? Yes, sir. The screen is visible. Okay. So listen, the question is define the secondary wavelets and how can we construct new wave front with them? How do we do, do that? So how do we define secondary wavelets? So there are two things, right? One is called as a wave front and the second is called as a wavelet. So what is the difference between? So what is the difference between, I think there is a question based on wave front also. So what is the difference between wave front and wavelet? Anybody? Sir, uh, each atom in the wave front uh, produces secondary distance. Sorry? Each atom in the wave front uh, produces secondary distance, which uh, produces wave. Uh, your voice is not clear. Who's speaking? Is it Abhishek? Yes, your sir. voice is not clear. Can you go a little away from the mic and tell me? Yeah, yeah. Can you go a little away from the mic and tell me? And be a okay. little louder? Uh, it, I'm able to hear, but there is a lot of jarring sound that is coming. Well, I will miss it. Uh, now tell me. It's something you were saying. Locus of? I already gave you the hint. Locus of all points. Vibrating. Yes. Okay. If the ones which are vibrating the same phase is what you call it as a wavefront and wavefront will have a source. Then what about this wavelet or the secondary wavelet? So we know that every point on the wavefront will act like a source for the new disturbance. And if you're able to draw a wavefront around every point that is there on the wavefront, this is what we call it a secondary wavelet. Right? And how do we construct? So using Huygens principle, you can say that every point on the wavefront is every wavefront. 
so before you draw the secondary wave front you take every point on the wave front and draw an imaginary circle around this so if you draw a tangential surface to this particular one then this one is what we call it as secondary wave front so there is a difference i hope you understood these dotted circles are called as secondary wavelets whereas the envelope that is a tangential surface to the secondary wavelets in the forward direction is what we call it as secondary wave front okay having said this moving on to the next question assuming that protons and neutrons have equal masses calculate how many times nuclear ma matter is denser than water okay so you need to calculate this then uh if nuclear mass is 1.2 into 10 power minus 15 into a power my, uh, 1 by 3 and the mass of the nucleon is 1.67 into 10 power 27 so how do you calculate the density of the nucleus so how do you calculate the nuclear density it is mass of the nucleus divided by the volume of the nucleus so what is the mass so mass of the nucleus is 1.67 into 10 power 27 that is mass of each neutron multiplied with the number of neutrons that is a the whole divided by 4 by 3 pi into r no r cube that is 1.2 into 10 power minus 15 into a a and a will get cancelled so when you take all these things right so this is a generic value and this value comes out to be somewhere around 2.307 into 10 power 17 kg per meter cube okay so when this is the value they are asking you to compare this with density of water so 2.307 into 10 power 17 divided by the density of water is 10 power 3 so it is 2.307 into 10 power 14 no units it is 10 power 2.307 into 10 power 14 times it is that of water okay so moving on to the next question a nucleus of mass number 235 splits into two nuclei whose mass numbers are in the ratio 2 is to 1 okay if r not is 1.4 for me you need to calculate the radius of the radii of the new nuclei radius of the new nuclei means both the nuclei okay so this so how to do this guys so what is the relation between radii and mass number r, r is equal to a power 1 by 3 so how is the mass number related to radius because they are asking the radius of the new nuclei that are formed so how do you find So if I say R one, R one is equal to R naught into A one power one by three, and R two is equal to R naught into A two power one by three. So how to solve this? Even if you have not written simplified answer, it is fine. But you should know the method for it. R one is equal to R naught is one point four into how much is A one guys? Is it not taking two, two third of two third? It is not two. It is two third of two thirty five. Correct? Ah, if you have written two, it is wrong. They are in the ratio two is to one. They can be in the ratio four is to two, eight is to four, anything. But how much is the mass of the first nuclei? It is two out of the total portion three. So two by three into two thirty five to the power a by two will be equal to one point four into one by three into two thirty five. In power one by three, so this is going to be the answer. These many femtometer will be the answer. Okay. So since time is less, I have to go a little faster. So listen, define the term wave. Already defined.
So locus of all points which are vibrating in the same phase. Say Huygens principle. So what does Huygens principle say? So Huygens principle states that every particle on the wavelength starts acting as a source for the fresh wavelength. Okay. Consider plane wavelength instant thin convex lens. So you have a thin convex lens on which there is a plane wavelength that is hitting. Okay. So for plane wavefront, where is the image? Sorry, where is the source placed? What should be the source for a plane wavefront to be formed? It is infinity. Okay. So these are the rays. Uh, draw a proper diagram to show how different wavefronts transfer through the lens and after focuses on a focal point of the lens. So after this, what is going to happen? These two rays, according to ray optics, we know that they are going to meet at the focus. So when they are going to meet at the focus, the wavefront due to this focal point is going to be something like this. So this is the diagram they are expecting. So this is incident plane wavefront and this is refracted Spherical wavefront. Next. In Young's double slit experiment, the splits uh, the slits are 1.5 millimeter apart. So small d is 1.5 millimeter. When the slits are eliminated, a monochromatic source and the screen is kept one meter away. So capital D is one meter away. Width of 10 fringes, so 10 times beta is measured to be 3.93 millimeter, where beta is the fringe width. Okay, calculate the wavelength of light used. So how to do this guys? So what is the relation between beta, lambda, small d and capital D? So beta is equal to lambda into capital D divided by small d. Right. So 10 times beta will be 10 times this thing. But what is 10 times beta? 10 times beta is 3.93 is equal to 10 into lambda is what you need to calculate. Capital D is 1 divided by 1.5 into 10 power minus 3 meters. So lambda will be equal to 3.93 into 1.5 into 10 power minus 3 meter. The whole divided by 10. Okay, this value comes out to be 5.895 into 10 power minus 7 meter or 5895 nanometer, sorry, 589.5 nanometer or 5895 angstrom. All these are the answers. Okay, next is, what will be the width of 10 fringes when the distance between the slits and the screen is increased by 0.5? So listen to this carefully. When it is increased by 0.5 lens, what is going to be the value? Beta is equal to lambda into capital D divided by small d. So you are using this wavelength only. So 5.895 into 10 power minus 7 into what is going to be the value of capital D now? What is going to be the value of capital D, guys? Are you guys there or not? See, one request if you are not interested, I will not handle this session. It is irritating me, literally. You guys need it, please stop, or else I'll have to call out names. You wrote the test yesterday only, right?
last one if you guys are going to speak i'll continue or else i'll cut this call what do you want me to do are you able to hear me in the first place answer that question yes sir uh, we will not i asked a very simple question i asked a very simple question capital d initially was 1 meter now it is increased by 1.5 0.5 meter means what is going to be the value of capital d now 1.5 sir 1.5 meter ah that is what I, that is what i am asking 1.5 divided by is there any change in the other parameters no sir it remains same uh, 1.5 into 10 power minus 3 this and this will get cancelled it will be 5.895 into 10 power minus 4 meter correct up correct da 5.8 into 10 power minus 4 meter is going to be the required answer uh but one minute what would be the width of 10 fringes is what they ask this is the width of one fringe so what will be the width of 10 fringes 58 point Uh, so please be careful okay don't do this mistake 58.95 into 10 or i can write as generally when you write no write it to one decimal value into 10 power minus 3 meter okay generally i i suggest writing the fringe width in terms of millimeter this 5.895 millimeter okay moving on to the next question So there is an X double slit experiment setup. Red light of wavelength six thousand angstrom is used, and the nth bright fringe is obtained at point P on the screen. So there is a screen at point P. By using a red light, what is obtained? Right fringe that is obtained. Keeping the same setting, the source is replaced. So what do you mean by same setting? Means capital D and small d are the same, but now what is changed? The source is changed. so whenever they change the source right its wavelength is also changed so when the source is replaced by green light of 5000 angstrom now the n plus 1th bright fringe is obtained at point p so here nth bright fringe due to red light and at the same point n plus 1th bright fringe due to green light okay so if i take this uh, this to be the central part calculate the value of n so for red light can i write n times beta is equal to or i can say this distance as y okay y will be equal to n times lambda into capital d by d can i write it like this guys because lambda into capital d by d is one fringe but there are bright fringes already present between o to p So y one, y two is equal to n plus one into lambda dash into capital D by D, right? So y one is equal to y two because that is the distance between both. Or else I will take it like this itself. I hope this point is clear, right? Did everyone understand what I wrote? So y is the same on both the sides. So n times lambda into capital D by small d is equal to n plus one into lambda dash into capital D divided by small d. These two will get cancelled. Lambda divided by lambda dash is equal to n plus one divided by n. So lambda is six thousand divided by five thousand. Don't convert angstrom. N plus one divided by n. This is going to be six by five is equal to n plus one by n. So six n is equal to five n plus five. So n will be equal to five. So the number of bright fringes that are formed due to red light are five, and the number of bright fringes formed due to the green light are six. Okay. Right. so monochromatic light of wavelength lambda is incident normally one minute yeah so monochromatic wavelength of 
light of uh, wavelength lambda is incident normally on a narrow slit of width A to produce a diffraction pattern on the stream placed at a distance capital D from the slit. With the help of relevant diagram, reduce the conditions for maxima and minima on the stream. Use these conditions to show that the angular width of the central maxima is twice the angular width of the secondary maxima. This is a theory question, okay, which you can refer the videos. So in that I have already clearly explained every step along with an uh, audio visual. Okay, you can have a look at it there. Every point is there in it. If you still don't get it, reach out to me. Next. Next is distinguish between nuclear fission and fusion. So obviously a simple answer, so nuclear fission is a process where a heavier, a heavier nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei along with the release of energy. And nuclear fusion is a place where two lighter nuclei combine to give you a bigger nuclei or a heavier nuclei along with the release of energy. So how in both these processes energy is released, okay, then, so how we can say is the answer whenever this kind of a question is asked, right? In this case, what you can write is in both cases, so there is the expected keyword, okay, in both cases or both processes, the total mass of products is dash, then the mass of original nuclei, fill that dash. More than, sir. It will be less than. Only then, there is a concept of mass defect that comes into picture. And due to mass defect, there is a concept of binding energy that comes into picture. You're able to understand. This is what happens with this. Okay? Yes, sir. Right. So next time, uh, write it properly. Calculate the energy release in mega electron volt in the deuterium and tritium fusion reaction which is given as H21 plus H31 gives you a helium nucleus along with the release of a neutron. So it's very simple. So mass of product is equal to how much? Mass of helium plus mass of neutron, that is 4.0203. So 8665 AMU. Uh, mass of the reactant is equal to 3.01049 plus 2.014102 U. So here, if you try to add in both and see, mass of reactants will be greater than the mass of the product. So what will be the mass defect? Mass defect will be mass of the reactant minus the mass of the product. How much ever is that value coming? That will be in terms of U. And that value, let me tell you how much it is. It is 0 0.01 triple eight three but you know that one amu is equivalent to nine point five mega electron volt so just replace it zero point zero one eight 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 three into nine thirty one point five mega electron volt per c square this is going to be the answer sorry This is going to be the answer. And the answer that you will get is 17.589 mega electron volt. So this is the amount of energy that is going to get released. Is everyone clear with this problem? Is there anyone who doesn't know the concept of binding energy? Understood, sir. Understood. Is everyone clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Very good. So, yes, just giving you that the concept of binding energy comes from the concept of mass defect. So, I want everybody to be confident with it. Okay. Next is draw the circuit diagram showing how PN junction diode is forward biased and reverse biased. How is the width of the depletion layer affected in both the cases? This is also a theory question. Right. This one is a concept that you need to know. Is there anyone who doesn't know this? 
You want me to explain? I'll do it. Or else, I'll proceed to the next one. So I'm assuming that everyone knows this, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Very good. So, did you guys do this in the lab also? Now, you your practicals are also over, right? Did you guys do it in the lab? That time, you would have practiced the forward bears and the reverse bear characteristics. Yes. yes or no? Uh, that should have that should have been you, right? The same theory. Okay. So the black box shown here converts the input voltage waveform into the output voltage waveform as shown. Can you can someone tell me what the black box is? Full wave rectifier. Very good. It is a full wave rectifier. So if you guys would have told rectifier only half mark. Full wave rectifier is the answer because the full wave is getting rectified. So the draw the circuit diagram of the circuit present in the black box. So how is it going to be? You will have one diode here. You will have an other diode here. Where is the load connected, guys? Is it connected at this point? Or where is it connected? So it is connected at the center. What is the name of this? This kind of a process I told you already. What is the name of this? It's called center tapping. Okay. So they both are mutually coupled. So this is the diagram for the full wave rectifier. This is D1 and this is D2. So they ask you to give a brief description. In the brief description, you can say, uh, during the positive half of the cycle, diode 1 will be forward biased, diode 2 will be reverse biased. Hence, you will be able to see half a wave rectified. And during the reverse biased condition, diode 2 will be positively charged and diode 2 will be negatively charged, due to which you will have another half wave that is getting rectified. So, D1, D2. So, these kind of waves are called as fluctuated DC. Okay. They are direct current only, but is called as fluctuated DC. So the description I gave you, right? Those same description are there in the uh, solution sheet also, which I'll be sharing. Okay. Next. Um, draw a diagram of illuminated PN junction. So there's again a theory. Explain briefly the three process due to it that ends. So there's also a theory question. So there is nothing for me to explain it. This also you can read it from the solution sheet, which I'm sharing with you. I'm going to concentrate only on problems and your doubts. Ah. Derive an expression for path difference in Ings double slit experiment and obtain the condition for constructive and destructive interference at a point on the screen. So how to derive this, guys? So you will have something like this. S1, S2, there is a point P here. From S1, there is a line going. S2, there is a line going. From here, drop a perpendicular. So, path difference delta x is equal to S2P minus S1P. Right? So, what you will do is, you will take the right angle triangles. So, this distance will be Y. Right? Then, this distance will be Y minus D by 2. This distance will be y plus d by 2. So, S2P uh, S2P square is equal to, this distance is capital D, d square plus y plus d by 2 the whole square and S1P the whole square is d square plus y minus d by 2 the whole square. Okay. So, S2P square minus S1P square is equal to Y plus D by 2 the whole square minus Y minus D by 2 the whole square. And this will give you 4 by 2, which will give you 2 times Y into D. Okay. Uh, this is the value of S2P minus S1P into S2P plus S1P. So, here you observe. One important point is S2P and S1P are approximately supposed to be close, closer to each other and they should be approximately equal to D. So here it becomes 2D. S2P minus S1P will give you 2 times YD divided by 2D. So 2 and 2 will get cancelled. Y into small d divided by capital D. 
and this is going to be the path of trend. So delta x is equal to y into small t divided by capital T. So this is the condition, and they asked us derive the condition for destructive and destructive interference. So delta x is equal to y d by small capital D. This will give you n times lambda. Okay. Similarly, this is for constructive interference. This is equal to y d by small capital D. This is equal to two n plus one into lambda by two. This is for Constructive interference. So these are the points. Already known fact. This is more important. So the intensity of the central max point, the Young's double slit experiment is I. Okay. Actually, they gave it as I Q. No. Okay. Actually, if if this kind of a mistake comes, it is I naught. Or if you take it as I, here if we assume as I Q itself, we'll take it as I Q itself. Find out the intensity at the point where the path difference is lambda by six. So how to solve that, guys? So what are the difference between phase difference and path difference? Phi divided by two pi will be equal to lambda divided by, or sorry, delta x divided by. So delta x is equal to lambda into phi divided by two pi. So what did they ask? Find out the intensity. Uh, how do you calculate the intensity, guys? So what is the formula that we know for intensity of the resultant? So we know that amplitude is equal to root of a one square plus a two square plus two times a one a two cos phi, right? So if I write intensity, intensity will be equal to i one plus i two plus two times root of i one into i two times cos phi. Okay, and if I take i one is equal to i two is equal to i, or uh, okay, I'll take I'll take this as i dash, this a dash. If I take them as i, then i dash will be equal to two i plus two i cos phi. So if I take out the two i, two i into one plus cos phi, one plus cos phi is going to be two cos square phi by two. So it will be four i cos square phi by two. Okay, well, this is the value of i dash. So this is the last question. Oh, so i dash is equal to four i into cos square phi by two. So i dash will be equal to four into i naught into what is the value of cos square phi by two? Sorry. Remember, remember, i naught is equal to maximum value, right? So y naught is maximum value means what should have been the value of phi for you to get maximum value? Phi should be zero. So if I put this as zero, then what will I get this value as? I plus I plus two I into cos zero. That is one. So I naught is literally equal to four I. So four I is nothing but I naught. I naught into cos square of Now you have the angles in your hand. Now you have the angles in your hand. See, uh, when path difference is when the path difference is lambda by six, what will be the corresponding phase difference? Phi will be equal to. Phi will be equal to the relation is there, no? Lambda by six divided by lambda into two pi. Cancel this; it will become pi by three. So take pi by three and substitute it here. You will have pi by six. So I naught into cos square pi by six is going to give us three by four. So intensity here will be three by four times the maximum intensity that is present. Okay. Similarly, can you guys tell me what will be the value of intensity when the path difference is lambda by four? How to solve? Phi is equal to how much, guys? Try it out. Lambda by four divided by lambda into two pi. Cancel this. It will become pi by two. So i dash is equal to i naught into cos square pi by four. That will become i naught by two, so it will become half of the value. So 
wherever the path difference is found to be lambda by 4, the corresponding intensity will be I naught by 2. So, what about lambda by 3? So, phi 3, let me call this as 2. So, phi 3 will be equal to lambda by 2 divided by lambda into 2 pi. Um, 2 and 2 will get cancelled, lambda and lambda will go phi. So, I dash will be equal to I naught into cos square of phi by 2, which is going to be 0. Sir, I think it's lambda by 3. Lambda by 3, yeah. So, So, lambda by 3 means how much should you get? 2 pi by 3, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 2 pi by 3 means cos square of pi by 3 upper. Correct? Uh, then become I naught by 4. So, that will be the required intensity. So, I hope you understood the logic behind this. Right? So, I am assuming that everybody knows this relation. This is the relation between the path difference and phase difference. Okay. Here. So that's it from my side. See you all in the next class. Any other doubts, guys? No doubts. No. Okay. One minute, don't wait, wait. Are you guys Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.